Hi, it's Chester Tugwell from Blue Pecan Computer Training. In this video, we're looking at the null error in Excel. Uh, number of situations where this error may occur. Uh, let's look at the ones you're most likely to come across. Now, you probably know that if you wanted to add up these values, say in January, that you'd say something like sum, open bracket, then you'd make a selection, close the brackets. And what you will notice is that um, the way Excel likes you to express ranges is you state the first cell, then put a colon in, and then put in the last cell. So if I press enter, it just adds those up. Now, if you were manually typing in this uh, formula, and you said, well, I want to do A3, and then instead of the colon, you put in a space or something like that, um, so we said then A6, and I press enter, then it comes up with the null error. So it's looking for that colon in the formula uh, to allow it to do the calculation properly. If you haven't put it in, it brings up this null error. Another situation is where you are adding up multiple ranges. So the way I would do that is I'd start with my sum function, I'd select this range, then I'd put a comma in, or I'd hold down control, and then I'd select my second range. So that comma separates out these two sets of ranges. I press enter, I get the answer. Now, if you were to leave a space in there, rather than putting in a comma, you press enter, you get your null error. So you must separate your uh, ranges with a comma uh, to do the calculation properly. So those are the two kind of most obvious reasons why you'd get the null error. But there is another reason. It's when you're basically trying to work out the intersection of two ranges. So, for example, over here, I've got two ranges, one horizontal and one vertical. And the intersection of those ranges, the value in the intersection of those ranges is 2. Now, what I can do is I can say equals this range space this range. Now notice this is a space, not a comma or anything like that. I press enter and it tells me the value in the intersection of those two ranges. So just by putting a space between those two ranges, it gives me the intersection or the value at the intersection of those two values. Now if I was to try that same trick with two ranges that don't intersect, space this range, I get this null value. Okay, so basically it's when you're using this intersection formula but the ranges don't actually intersect. Let's use look at a useful example of where we might use this intersection trick. So what I've got here is a little table of sales. I've got three salespeople and then I've got Jan through to May at the top here. What I'm going to do first of all to use this function quite nicely um, is to, well, before we do that, let's just look at the intersection and how this might work here. So if I said equals um, Bob's row, comma, and the February column, that should come up with 180, and it does, because that's at the intersection of the row and the column. That's a little bit awkward, though, to have to go through and make that selection. Let's see if we can make life a little bit easier for ourselves. What I'd like, in fact, is two drop-down lists. I can choose the salesperson and the month, and it automatically brings up the correct um, sales value, a bit like a two-way lookup using VLOOKUP at Match, for example. Now, what I would do, first of all, is I would name these ranges. So I'd name each column, and I'd name each row. Now, the easiest way to do that is if I select this whole table and go up to the Formulas tab, you've got a little option here called Create from Selection. So what it will do is it will look at the column headings and it will look at the row headings and automatically name these rows and columns based on those headings. So I want to create names for top row and left column, so it names columns and rows. Click on OK. Just to prove that those rows and columns have been named, I go to my name box, there are all the names. So that's fine. So what I'd also want is, well, let, let's just try those names. So if I had... Um, equals Bob space Feb. Let's try that. Yeah, that works now. Let's try another one. Equals Bill 
space April. That works as well. Okay, 416. That's exactly what I want. So the names definitely work, and it's slightly easier than having to make a selection for those ranges. But what if I wanted to actually um, put the names in cells? So I have Ben there, and I have March here. Now, um, if I was to say equals this, comma this, that isn't going to work. That doesn't work. It's not really referring to the names. Um, now I could use the indirect function. So I could say equals indirect. Now indirect, what that basically does is say, well, refer to a name range. Um, but I'm actually making that reference by typing the name in a cell. So it's indirectly referring to it. So I could say um, indirectly refer to the name range by the value in that cell, space. And the intersection is with the named range indirectly referred to in that cell. And that brings up the answer. So now I can say, for example, Bill um, and Feb. And it brings up those values quite nicely. So by using the indirect function, I get around that issue. So to create the drop down list, that would be dead easy. What I would do is I would say in this cell, I go to my data tab, data validation, allow a list, and the source of the list of these cells here. And then for the months, I would say data validation, and I would say list, and the source of the list is here. Okay, so I've got my two drop down lists. I can choose any intersection and it'll bring up the correct value here. Okay, so that's the null error. Um, these are the obvious reasons why you'd use it. You may not have come across this intersection trick in Excel, but if you want to use it or start, you want to start to use it, um, you may have come across this null error and now at least you understand why it appears. Okay, thank you very much.